Greetings, lovers of lore. It's your host, Vicious Venus, and welcome back to the newest installment of the Whimsical Whispers podcast. Today, I'm going to be talking about a certain type of villain or antagonist. We all know about the tragic villain, the antagonist with a miserable backstory who wants to get revenge on the world that once scorned them. We've seen and read them before, and we all know how their story goes. However, the type of villain I want to discuss is quite different from the tragic villain. These are the villains who don't have a reason. They're evil for evil's sake, and their only purpose is to cause chaos and destruction. These are the pure evil villains. Villains who are nothing but evil. Today, I'm going to talk about what makes a pure evil villain, what happens when you correctly write one, and what happens when you incorrectly write one. Before we get into the episode, I would like to make a few disclaimers. These are all of my opinions, they are not facts. If you have a different opinion, that is completely okay. If you have something that you would like to say, then please, depending on the platform you are using, comment down below and we can have a wonderful Lovers of Lore discussion. So what makes a pure evil villain? What sets them apart from tragic villains? What makes them different? Well, first of all, pure evil villains don't have sad backstories. I know, pretty obvious. But it is important as most people tend to associate villains with tragic backstories. There are a lot of tragic villains, and for some reason, people really love writing tragic villains. Not saying that tragic villains are bad, but I feel like there's just way too many. Because of this, a lot of people end up associating villains, bad guys, antagonists with people who have a tragic or sad past. However, pure evil villains were never made into monsters, rather they were born monsters. They could have been born into a loving, caring family, but it wouldn't have mattered. Their past does not influence their present actions at all. In fact, their past is completely unimportant and unnecessary. Most of the time with pure evil villains, their backstory, their past is not discussed enough because there's nothing significant that happens in their past. There's nothing that turns them into a monster. There's nothing that turns them into a villain. They are rotten bad guys through and through. They were just born that way. Another characteristic about pure evil villains is that they are usually harder to reason with. With tragic villains, the main character is able to talk to them, to get them to give up their evil ways by offering less evil alternatives. This is because the main character realizes that the tragic villain is just somebody who wants to change the world or change something about their life that hurts them. By understanding this, the main character then takes advantage of this by telling the tragic villain that there are better ways to solve their problems. However, pure evil villains aren't like this. They want to cause pain. They want to hurt and harm others. Being the bad guy is their dream job. This makes it a lot harder for the main character to interact with the antagonist, because since the main character is often somebody with good morals, they just can't understand why somebody would want to cause pain and would want to hurt others. Because of this, the protagonist can never seem to understand the antagonist, and it makes it a lot harder for the protagonist to be able to connect and empathize with the villain. One last thing that pure evil villains don't have is a goal. Their main goal is to create as much chaos as possible and to punish the main character for standing in their way. I'm not saying that pure evil villains can't have a goal in mind, they're just not as dedicated to their goal as tragic villains are. For example, tragic villains only hurt people, only cause chaos, only do bad stuff for the sake of their goal, whereas pure evil villains, they just do the bad stuff because it's for fun and it just happens to help them reach their goal. They aren't doing bad stuff for the end result, they're just doing it for the fun of it. 
they know very well that there are better alternatives, but they chose the path of evil because it's fun for them. And this is exactly what makes a pure evil villain a lot different from a tragic villain. So, what happens when a pure evil villain is written correctly? What should we expect from the audience? Well, typically what I find is that the audience ends up loving the villain, the villain, excuse me, and at the same time is scared for the main character. Pure evil villains tend to have a lot of fun with their occupation. Tragic villains are always so serious because all they want to do is get to their goal, is to accomplish their one and true desire, and because of that, they can be kind of a downer. However, pure evil villains, they have fun. They love being the bad guy. They're having fun with it, and we can see it on the screen or in the book. This makes the audience enjoy seeing the villain, and it entertains the audience seeing this bad guy having so much fun being a bad guy. However, the audience also ends up feeling fear for the main character. With tragic villains, there isn't that much of a danger because tragic villains typically have limits. Pure evil villains, they don't. If it's fun, they're gonna do it. They don't care about the consequences and they don't care who they end up hurting. This makes the audience feel more scared for the main character because the villain can literally do anything. They don't have morals. They're just going to do it if it's fun. They're going to do it if it's evil. And this can frighten the audience, make them worried for the main character every time the main character engages in a battle or interacts with the pure evil villain. Another thing that you can notice when a pure evil villain is written correctly is that they will be more chaotic and unpredictable. Like I said before, tragic villains usually have a line that they don't cross. They're dedicated to their goal. If there's something that is unnecessary, then they won't do it. Pure evil villains? That's not the case. If it's fun, if it's evil, if it's gonna hurt people, they're just gonna do it. Which makes them so chaotic and unpredictable. It makes them wild and purely evil. We can't reason with a pure, vil- a pure evil villain because we don't know what they're going to do next. We know that as long as it's evil, they're going to do it. We know that they don't have lines that they're never going to cross. We know that they do not have limits. Which means the pure evil villain is going to end up being a lot more chaotic and a lot more unpredictable. The pure evil villain is going to end up being a lot more scary because we just don't know what they're going to scheme next. Another thing that you should probably notice is that the pure evil villain will most likely be a static character with little to no character development. Now, as much as I love character development, I do have to admit that not every single character needs character development, that static characters can be good characters, and that not every single character needs to be dynamic or needs to have a drastic change in their personality. Pure evil villains are typically static characters. There's nothing to change in them. Sure, they do a bunch of bad stuff, but that's just who they are. They know they're doing the bad stuff, so they're just not going to change. There's no redemption. There's no trying to be a good person. There's no fixing mistakes. They know though they made those mistakes, and they're just going to keep making them. So pure evil villains are usually going to end up being static characters. Now for some people, this is going to be a good thing, while for others it may be a bad thing. This is something that I'm going to discuss a little later. But because of the mannerisms of a pure evil villain, they're going to end up being typically static characters, not much character development, little to no redemption, and that's just that. Now, what happens when they are written incorrectly? We've already covered what happens when a pure evil villain is written correctly, but What if somebody just doesn't know how to write a pure evil villain and decides to try for the very first time and it just comes out wrong? 
Well, first of all, the audience or the readers will not enjoy the fact that the villain has no reason to be evil. I find pure evil villains harder to write than tragic villains. With tragic villains, we understand why they do their evil deeds. We understand why they are the way they are. Pure evil villains? It's not the case. Like I said before, they could be born into a loving, caring family, but in the end, that wouldn't matter. Some people will not enjoy the fact that the villain was evil just for evil's sake. It's kind of hard writing a character who has no reason for the way they are, because everybody has a reason as to what they do. So by writing a character who just has no reason for their actions, it can sit the wrong way with the audience. It might make people feel uncomfortable, it might make them feel as though this character is one-dimensional and really does not have a personality. It's hard to write this characteristic correctly because Like I said, people have a reason for what they do, and pure evil villains, they don't have that reason. So it's quite dangerous when you're trying to write a pure evil villain, and you always need to make sure that it's still enjoyable. I think one of the main reasons that people end up liking pure evil villains is because they end up being enjoyable to watch and they end up being threatening enough to actually move the plot forward. But if you aren't able to bring those very materials you need to create a good pure evil villain, people are not going to like your villain. They're going to say that your villain lacks a reason, your villain lacks the personality, your villain lacks the logic it needs to actually be a villain. So this is why I find pure evil villains a lot harder to write, and perhaps this is the reason why people like to stick to tragic villains. Because at least with tragic villains, we understand why they are the way they are. With pure evil villains, this is simply not the case. Anyway, that is all I had for today. I hope you enjoyed this week's installment, and I will see you all next week. Again, please comment down below, depending on the platform you are using, because I would love to have a conversation with you guys. And I will see everybody next week. Goodbye.